So now that we've installed Windows Server Backup, let's talk about how we would actually create a one-time or one-off backup. Now, I'm going to start by giving myself some data to backup. So I'm going to do new, there's the right folder here, new item, and we're going to specify item type is going to be a directory, and I'm going to create it as C colon data. And then I'm going to set location to C colon data. And I'm going to create, just use Notepad to create a file called sample.txt. Yes, I want to create a new file. This is a sample file. Okay, cool. And then file, save, and Alt FX to exit. Okay, so that gives us a file to work with. Now, one of the things we said earlier is that uh, Windows Server Backup uses backup policies. And we've got a command new wb policy that will create a new policy. But that we actually need to capture that policy in a variable in order to be able to use it. So I'm going to do $backup equals new wb policy. And now if I display the contents of the backup variable, that's going to show us our policy. And notice it's a new policy, so we have no schedule, no targets, no volumes to backup. Targets is where we're backing up to. No files specified to backup or exclude. We've got nothing here. It's a brand new policy. So now we need to start setting uh, different things into our policy. So, um, I want to back up just the C colon backslash data. Now, you can back up entire volumes or roles or components. All right, I'm just backing up the data that we just created, the C colon data folder. And so, our command is going to be, now, we're going to, I'm going to walk you through this because it's a little funky how it's going to work. So, we're going to do it a couple of times. We'll let it fail, and then I'll show you how we fix it. So, the... Um, the command is new dash wb file spec. So new wb file specs are specified. And we're going to do c colon backslash data. And so this creates this right here. C colon data, we're going to back up everything. It's going to be recursive. It's going to be included in the spec. Okay, that's all great. However, that doesn't add it to the policy. So if I do dollar sign backup notice it's still not associated with it so what we have to do is add the file spec now if we do add wb file spec to our policy dollar sign backup and we're going to do c colon backslash data it says yeah i can't do that so what we need to do is we need to add that, um, use that new WB file spec. And we can do this one of two ways. We can do dollar sign files equals new WB file spec, C colon backslash data. And then we can do add WB file spec to dollar sign backup add dollar sign files and that will actually work the other thing we could do is we could do here open parentheses add dash wv file spec whoops get it right new dash wb file i cannot type today file spec C colon backslash data. And that would work as well. So either one of these two approaches will work to display it. Now, if I do dollar sign backup and look at the policy we've got, you'll see now we have files to backup, file specs to include. Okay, so far so good. Now we need to specify where we want it to backup to. And for that, let's do a get wb volume and if we just do get wb volume it's actually going to throw an error for us so let's do a get help on get dash wb volume because i want to show you something here 
And you're going to see we have an option here. We can specify by disk, by policy, by critical volumes, by all volumes, or by specific volume paths. So I can do get WB volume R, and that will show me my backup volume, which is the one I created in an earlier video. Or I can do dash all volumes. And this will display all of them for me. Now, things that we want to look at, things that are is on disk with critical volume, we can't back up to a volume that's on a disk with another critical volume. So what we're looking for is we're looking for one that's not, and that's going to be this one right here, our backup volume that we created earlier. Now, I want you to see this right here. This gives us our free space. And that becomes really useful because we want to make sure that we have enough free space available to do our backup. Now, notice all of these say valid source. And what that means is I can back up this volume. I can back up stuff off of C drive. I could back up stuff off of the system reserve. I can back up stuff off of the art drive val uh, volume because they're all valid sources. All right, but we're going to back up to this one from something on C drive, which is a valid source. C colon back, uh, backup is what we're going to back, or C colon backslash data. We're going to back it up to the R drive. And even though the R drive is a valid source, it doesn't mean we can't use it as a target. We just can't uh, target anything that is on a disk with a critical volume. Okay, so this free space here, what if I wanted to display that in a way that's a little more useful because it displays it in bytes? So I'm going to do get WB volume uh, for the R drive. And we've done this in some other videos, but let me walk you through it again real quick. Now I want to look at just that free space, and I want to convert that to gigabytes. So I'm going to get WB volume R colon, and I'm going to pipe that to select object free space. Now, that's still going to leave it in that table. So to get it out of that table and get just the data, I can do expand property. And that will get me just that data. Now that I have that data, I can turn that into gigabytes. So I can, and I'll have to put this entire thing in, stop that, in uh, parentheses because I wanted to execute all of this first, and then I want to divide that by one gigabyte. And that's going to show me I've got 19.92 gigabytes. And then I can capture that in a variable, and I can uh, use it in a script or something. I can do whatever I want to with it. But that shows me that I have a fair amount of free space, especially since I'm backing up one text file. I think we'll be good. All right. So... Now, I want to set that as my target. And just like we did with a file spec, we're going to do this using variables. I'm going to clear my screen here, move that mouse pointer out of the way. So I'm going to do dollar sign volume equals get WB volume R colon. And that's going to save that in a variable named volume. And I'm going to use that with the new backup target. But again, I'm going to need to save the results of that into a variable. So I'm going to do dollar sign target equals get, not get, new, there we go, new WB backup target. And I want that to be the volume we saved in dollar sign volume. And that will specify my target. Now, if I look at dollar sign volume, You'll see we have that information from the uh, WB volume. If I look at dollar sign target, you'll see that we have our target information. All right. Um, now I need to associate this target with the uh, backup policy that we have. So for that, it's add dash WB backup target. And I'm going to add this to my dollar sign backup policy, and it's going to be the object in dollar sign target. Now, if I look at my backup policy, I have a backup target for R drive, 
file specs to backup. We're backing up C colon data. We're not excluding anything. We are ready at this point to start our backup. Now remember, this is not a scheduled backup. This is a one-time, one-off backup. And I can take this to backup anything that I want to at any point that I want to using this uh, procedure that we've just walked through. And that can be really useful. Let's actually start this real quick. Start WB backup. And then I'm going to specify the policy that I want, dollar sign backup. All right. This can be really useful anytime I'm getting ready to make major changes to a system. I can do a one-time real quick backup. And like I said, I'm not a big fan of Windows Backup for a consistent backup solution. If you have nothing else, it will get the job done. You can schedule it. You can set up bare metal recovery. And you can do all the things you absolutely have to do. But for a real quick one-off backup, it works pretty well. Again, you've got limitations with where you can back up to. But it does get the job done. All right. Our backup operation has completed successfully. Our next step is going to be to verify the backup, and that's going to be the topic of our next video.